Lachlan Cartwright joins me now. He's, of course, the former executive editor of the National Enquirer. He's now special correspondent for The Hollywood Reporter. This is such a fascinating piece. I was just telling you, I also listened to your uh, piece on The Daily and hear, heard you speak, talk through it. A lot of people don't even know that this is what happens out there. Uh, but I want to start with, with what I just read. You, you clearly have been ve paying very close attention to this case. You know the details very well. Uh, you're going to be in the courtroom, uh, I believe. And as someone very intimately aware of the contours here, what do you hope people understand? Fundamentally, Jen, this is a case about election interference. And I understand people are focusing on a, a payoff to a, a porn star. But um, fundamentally here, this is a, a case about election interference. We go back to a, a meeting that took place in August of 2015 with the person I used to work for, David Pecker, where he's with Michael Cohen, and he says... I will be the eyes and ears of the campaign. Mm -hmm. My organization will purchase negative stories off the market and we will run negative stories on your rivals. Now, that is something I did not know in real time when I was the executive editor of The Enquirer, when we were orchestrating you know, uh, operations such as what happened with Dina Sujudin, where mm -hmm. we were trying to stand up this tip uh, about Trump having a love child. And then we suddenly the order came to, to stand down and we paid him $30,000. And that that story never saw the, the light of day. But uh, ultimately, um, this organization, this media organization, you've been around politics mm -hmm. long enough uh, to know that it's not unusual for a, a media organization to do favors for a political sure. candidate or a campaign. But this is the first time in American democracy, certainly that I'm aware of, that a media organization is, turns itself, twists itself into a criminal enterprise to help get uh, a candidate elected. And that is what went on here. And that is fundamentally what this case I is about. And that is such an important part of this story, because it's not just about this one particular case. That's what we hear in the courtroom. It's also about the, me and the media organization you used to work for really pushing negative stories about a number of people who are Trump's rivals. I mean, stories about his 2016 primary rivals, Ted Cruz, Ben Carson, as well as a slew of negative stories about Hillary Clinton. We all remember kind of these covers, or many of us do. Talk about how basically, and you've touched on it a little bit, this whole entire media organization was set up to protect a single candidate. Yeah, I mean, I, I've come from tabloids, uh, you know, in, in the UK. Uh, I worked for the Murdochs for many years, both at The Sun and the New York Post. I'm, I'm used to tabloid journalism. This wasn't that. Mm. Certainly did not. It, it, it merged itself into uh, basically a propaganda arm where we went from reporting on celebrities or mass shootings, true crime, which is the bread and butter, as, as is, you know, celebrity you know, divorces. And suddenly we're now running stories. Hillary has three months to live mm. and we're lining up. I remember that. One. Pseudo experts to to analyze you know pictures of her looking frail, and our art department is ginning up uh, these these images to make her look in in poorer health than than she was. And it was week after week after week as one of Trump's uh, rivals was up uh, in the polls, whether it was Ted Cruz or mm -hmm. uh, someone else. We would be running a, a negative story and say what you will about the, the Enquirer. The, the reach of this publication, it's on you know, market, supermarket shelves in every Walmart, mm -hmm. in every airport. And, and those, th that real estate was being weaponized. Uh, by by AMI to help get Trump elected. And that is what, you know, Alvin Bragg is talking about in this statement of facts, in this indictment. And that's what I think people sort of pass over a little bit when we talk about falsifying business records. Fundamentally, this was a plot an agreement to influence the 2016 election, and it worked. And this is, again, so important because, I mean, I've worked, obviously, in the side of media when you're working for campaigns, right? And earned media, as they say, magazine covers that are on uh, grocery store shelves, that is gold to people, the visuals of what they're seeing. So we learned today that the judge uh, will allow National Enquirer covers to be admissible in court. We just showed a few of them, including the Hillary Clinton is dying cover. Are there some that you think are important for people to see? Are there some that, uh, you know, you think would particularly make that point? It's the pattern. It's the pattern to look through what this publication was was publishing when I first joined in 2014, when it was, you know, it was Jen and Ben or it was, you know, Tom Cruise or yeah. it was that kind of mix of celebrity content. And then to look at how this publication then became, as I said, a propaganda tool for the Trump organization that, you know, it was Hillary that was dying every other week. It was Ted Cruz's father is involved with Lee Harvey Oswald. It was, you know, every every 
other politician is suddenly there's a negative story. And that, again, the catch and kills everyone focuses on, I, and I get that obsession. But it is looking at how this publication was weaponized and becoming into becoming a propaganda tool uh, of, the, of the Trump organization. I think that pattern here is incredibly important. I, one of the things that's striking to me about all of this is that you've decided to put yourself out there. I mean, you had an NDA. Um, which, I'm, which I'm publicly breaking. Which you're publicly breaking. Um, we all know that there can be threats and even violence. Which I've experienced. Which you've experienced. Um, talk to me a little about that and um, how you considered that when you decided to be as public as you have been in telling a very personal story. I've wanted to tell this story for, for some years. Um, for, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, as a, as a journo, uh, it is a, a cracking yarn, um, but it is a, a story of national importance. And um, uh, secondly, um, I, uh, as someone who has been uh, pursued, uh, uh, you know, over the years because of, uh, you know, my help to media organisations as a source, which is a, a important part of the New York Times piece, is when I reveal that I was a source for a lot of these organisations getting out in 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 you know, real time with the Wall Street Journal on the eve of the election, helping get the Karen McDougal uh, story out into the the public domain. But I also wrote this story for anyone that is in a tight spot that is being, having the screws turned on them mm -hmm. to know that, you know, at some point they're going to be able to get to the other side of it. And, and that's what I was able to do. I was able to, after several years, to get to the other side of this. And David Pecker and Dylan Howard, who have written me, you know, a number of very intense legal threats, threatening $5 million lawsuits, uh, I'll be down at court and I'll be able to look them in the eyes and think, you know, I've, I've got out the other side of this and, and you blokes are, are here testifying uh, about, you know, these matters. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I've wanted to tell this story for, for some years, and I'm glad that I had this opportunity. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.